What's going on everybody? It's Trifecta J here back with another episode of the South Dakota Dynasty. Today we have an episode as we have a little bit of a gap in the season with our bye week and we're going to be going through recruiting and sort of just a season update meet all of the recruits on the board and that's going to be the biggest part of this episode. But so currently we are 2-2 two and two on the season, one of our better, probably the best start we've had so far in this series. So far this year, it's been a season filled with highs and lows. We're 2-2 two and two currently on the season. We're about an inch away from being 3-1. and one. So that's been very exciting. One of the best starts we've had so far in this series. But one of the definite biggest lows was losing quarterback J.R. Miller for the season. He's been replaced by Jalen Tate, who's looked good at times, and he's added an element that we haven't had with J.R. Miller, who's really a true dual threat and an excellent runner and has been a better passer than I was expecting. But in week one, we played Old Dominion. J.R. Miller had maybe his best start to a game ever with 21 attempts for 275 yards and two touchdowns, but did have to leave this game early. Jalen Page had 28 carries for 141 yards and we scored with around three minutes left to take the lead and then were able to secure the victory. In week two, this is where J.R. Miller went down. J.R. Miller wasn't playing super well in this game. He was 7-14 for 50 yards and a pick. And he, this is the game, of course, where he dislocated his knee and had to, will miss the rest of the season. He was replaced by Jalen Tate, who I thought looked really good throwing the ball. He had 157 yards, a touchdown, and did have an interception. He also ran five times for 55 yards. This was a game where we really struggled to run the football. Outside of Tate's five runs, we can see Jalen Page had 3.6, 0.4 yards for Dontavious Knight, and Jer Miller had four carries for 11 yards. And then Dontavious Knight, he's had two monster catches so far this year, one for 74 yards and the other for around 60, and has been a much better receiving threat this year than he's been in his freshman season. After that, we played UAB. It was a very close game. The time ran out on us as we drove down the field. This was Jalen Tate's first career start. He threw for 237 and a touchdown and had 170 yards on the ground on 15 attempts and a touchdown. Dontavious Knight had two rushing touchdowns, and then Jalen Page had a receiving touchdown in this last game. It was a game in pretty dominant fashion we won. We really dominated the time of possession. We ran the ball very effectively, threw well when we needed to. This is the blueprint I want out of games moving forward, where Jalen Tate goes 14 for 17 for a really nice yards per attempt, throws a touchdown, completes a high percentage of his passes, and doesn't turn the ball over. And then you can see we ran the ball super well. All of our backs got involved, got a couple of, or got Phoenix McDonald, a receiver, involved as well. But now we'll look at some of the season statistics so far as J.R. Miller, you can see 330 yards and ends up with 7,500 yards in his career, 51 touchdowns and 50 interceptions. So he does end up positive in that regard. Three touchdowns, one interception for Jalen Tate. And then Tate has 328 so far on the ground on 31 attempts. 10.5 yards per carry and six of those are 20 or more yards which is one every five runs which is incredible. Jalen Page has been pretty good running the ball. He has been a little inconsistent at times and then Dontavious Knight has 22 for 107 and then we've got more and backs involved after week one. At receiver Jacoby Patton leads us and then Cordell Hicks, Deontay Knox and Dontavious Knight have all been involved as well. Our current leading tackler is Eric Sikowski, tackles for losses LaDorian McRae and Tevin Robinson. We're doing a decent job so far this year getting pressure on the quarterback and getting sacks, but we still don't have an interception and we've only forced one turnover so far this season. And that was recovered by Kevin O'Kelly, a huge turnover there, but did not end up being enough against UAB. So we'll look at the top 25 real quick. Clemson is number one. UCLA is in the top five. And at number two, Southern Cal is number three, followed by Miami, Auburn, Notre Dame, Alabama, Penn State, Oklahoma, and North Carolina to round out the top 10. You can see some of the other teams. Texas Tech is now up to number 16. Ohio State suffered their first loss. And then South Carolina lost to Missouri. And Cincinnati is back in the top 25 after losing to Ball State. 
in our own conference we are actually currently in first place in the mountain division i'm not sure how long that'll last only three teams have actually played a conference game but wyoming is three and oh north dakota state is two and one south dakota state is one and two so not a great start to the season for them as they had a really good year last year but they've actually last two games both went to overtime they beat purdue but lost to cincinnati and then lost to byu by two points so all of their games have been very close and there's a strong chance they could have been 3-0 right now, or also 0-3, just depending on how different things fall. Then we'll look at North Dakota for the final team, and they still are winless, as they've lost to Louisiana, Rutgers, and Rice. The Rice game was a little bit closer to keeping it at least within two scores this year instead of getting blown out. Once again, they have a really tough schedule, so I don't know if they'll be able to get a win this year unless they're able to beat us in Week 14. The next and probably final thing we're going to look at real quick as we look around the league is the Heisman race as Trey Sanders at Alabama is in first place. He had an amazing year last year with 1,800 yards. He has 400 yards so far this year and already eight touchdowns. He only had 12 last year and is nearing surpassing that already. Then we can see some other players all from Blue Blood programs and all running backs. Running backs have really dominated the Heisman races so far in this series. But now we'll actually get into the recruiting portion of this episode. We have 18 seniors graduating this year. We had 21 last year. So another big class of seniors. This year, a lot more key contributors in my opinion. Last year we had a high number of seniors, but not necessarily all of them were starters or regular contributors for this team. But in season five and season six, it'll only be 10 and 11. So I feel like this year is very important to get a large class and then the next two years we can focus more on quality as this team continues to grow. But on offense we have 10 players graduating and 8 on defense with 5 in the front 7 and then a few offensive linemen and a lot of skill position talent will be graduating. Jaron Miller and two other quarterbacks will be gone. Jalen Page, Ladorian Bolden, Deontay Knox and Muhammad Ali Saria and then Brock Peterson, all will be leaving, and then Jack Sternberg. So we'll start off the recruiting episode the way we normally start all of them off. We'll see where these prospects are coming from. We've kept it in a very tight vicinity so far. We can see a big target in Minnesota so far and in the Twin Cities, as we have six different prospects just from that area. But once again, it's normally all border states. We have a couple from Idaho, one from Alaska this year, and then I believe one from Canada. We do see a few more from different states as we're trying to expand our range a little bit, but I'm not sure how many of these players will actually be committed to us or signed with us at the end of the day because there wasn't a ton of talent really there. And one last thing before we actually get into meeting the recruits on the board, we'll look at the five stars in this class. Charlie Ross, an athlete, maybe a tight end or a linebacker, is the number one player in the country. And it looks like he may be a defensive end or most likely it looks like he will be a linebacker and is deciding between Michigan, Michigan State, and Notre Dame. But it looks like Michigan has the lead right now. Then we can see some of the other players as South Carolina has gotten another five star as it's an athlete this time, maybe an offensive lineman there. And we can just go through the list and see all of the five stars and just try and familiarize ourselves with the next stars in college football. One more thing we will look at is the top quarterbacks in this class. We have Cody Cusco. He's 6'2", 237 from California and he is heavily favoring Southern Cal and Stanford, so he's gonna stay out west, be in the Pac-12, and maybe will be that next golden arm quarterback on the west coast who takes college football by storm. Then out of the state of New Jersey, we have Trey Wilson, a pocket passer, who is heavily favoring Minnesota. Rutgers is also there, but it looks like he'll be going to Minnesota. They've been able to collect some nice four and five star players so far in this series, and PJ Fleck is definitely building a strong program. Then Trevor Smith the third, not getting a ton of interest from the top tier programs, but he's from the state of Tennessee. Memphis is currently his only offer, and we'll have to see he is a pocket pass. He may fit in that spread air it out system over in Memphis, Tennessee. And then the last one is Anthony Cosmas. He is from Michigan, and he is more of a mobile quarterback, 
and a tight battle between Michigan State and Wisconsin, but it looks like he'll be staying in the Big Ten, although Kent State looks to be a dark horse in that competition. So currently in week five, we have one commit so far, and it's Elijah Eason. He's a quarterback, 6'4", 223 from Iowa. He is a big body, and he's a good athlete, not super athletic, and not a great passer. But we need depth at the quarterback position with Jalen Tate. He'll be the starter most likely for the next four seasons. Colton Carver is the backup. He's a junior college transfer who's currently redshirting, so I'll have him for season five and season six. But we need to find Jalen Tate's backup and at some point find Jalen Tate's successor. And this is a decent athlete who maybe could develop into an athletic mobile quarterback who can be a decent passer. We'll head to the top of the board now and see the top target is DeAndre Law. He looks to be an elite prospect. He's a junior college transfer from Minneapolis, and we're in a battle with UTSA and Wyoming for him. He's only 5'10", 220, and he'll be a sophomore when he enters, but he is a great athlete. He can lay the wood. He can shed blocks. He can rush the passer. He can cover. He can basically do it all. He has very few weaknesses outside of maybe his ability to process information quickly that would be my only concern with him but with his athleticism i think he can make up for a lot of those faults and would be an instant starter and an instant impact player for us and probably one of our top five most talented players going into next year if we're able to secure the commitment from him next up is edgar barrios we've been able to secure a lot of size in the offensive line recruits that we've gotten in recent years edgar barrios doesn't really follow with that He's 6'5", so he's tall, but he's only 275 pounds, and he's out of Missouri. It's a very tight competition with Iowa, and we really want to get him. He is a good athlete. He's strong. He's more of a pass blocker, so I think he could be a nice replacement for Jalen Landry. Once he graduates, we can give Barrios a little bit of time to develop, and I think he could be an excellent player for us moving forward. It's just a matter of if he wants to come to us, maybe play it a little earlier than he would at Iowa or wants to go to the Big Ten and play some big time college football. We've recruited a lot of safety so far in the series and we have a ton of depth there, but when you find a talent like Keyshawn Johnson, especially when he's from Vermillion, he's a hometown kid, it's hard to pass him up. He's 6'1", 212, and we're in another battle. We haven't had a ton of recruiting battles so far in this series, but DeAndre Law, Edgar Barrios, and Keyshawn Johnson, it's all tight battles. This one with Iowa State, and he's not super fast, but he is very quick, and he's not a great tackler, but I think he could develop into a nice cover guy and just an all-around player, and given a little bit of time, his overall's higher, and he's not quite ready, though, in my opinion, to make an immediate impact, but I think with time, he could be a great sort of linebacker, safety hybrid who can rush the passer, he can cover, he's good in pursuit, he may not necessarily lay like a lot of big hits or be a super strong tackler, but I think he could definitely be a very strong player for us. And with the talent level currently on this team and in this program, he would be a great player for us to get. Nolan Durant, another South Dakota native, and we're really close to securing this commitment. He's a good athlete at the linebacker position. That's something we're really targeting in this cycle as we have recruited some nice linebackers but players like Jackson Harvey, LaDorian McRae, Logan McGee, none of them are super athletic, and I think we're trying to fix that with DeAndre Law and Nolan Durant. Durant isn't a super athlete like DeAndre Law is, but I think he's a guy who has a nice base for athleticism, and with time to develop, could be a very strong player for us, and could potentially be a nice guy who can rush the passer, stop the run, and cover. Jalen Paul, another guy, he's 6'6", 266, so has the build that I think he can grow into. And I think we have a chance to get the commitment from him. Iowa and Iowa State are lurking, but we do have a nice lead. And he's a balanced blocker. He's not quite the athlete that Berrios is, and he's not quite as strong, but would be another great guy to get into the system. And with time to develop, I think could be a great player for us. We haven't been able to get a lot of size at receiver or a lot of immediate impact outside of Cooper Price. Travion Hart, he has the size. I don't know if he'll be able to make an immediate impact for us though. He's from Billings and he's 6'3", 211. So he's a big outside receiver. 
who also has some nice speed, good spectacular catch, and good jumping compared to the players currently on this roster. And I think with time, he could be a downfield threat who can go up and get the football, but he's definitely going to need some time with his hands, route running and catching traffic. And he does actually have some decent run after the catch ability as well. One position I think we've done a good job recruiting to so far in this series is running back another guy who looks like we're going to be able to get beating out South Dakota State is Chancellor Adams. He's 5'10", 215. So he has more size than guys that we've gotten in recent years. He's not going to make any real 80-yard touchdowns. He doesn't have burning speed, but is quick and I think could develop with his size, strength, and where his trucking is at now. I think he could definitely develop into a good power back and has some good route running, so he has a chance to also be a good receiving back out of the backfield. Another quarterback we're targeting is I wanted to get to in this cycle to have some time to develop and hopefully find someone who can be that heir apparent to Jalen Tate. It's Isaiah Simmons, 5'11", 186 from West Fargo and no real interest from any of the other Dakota schools, but I think he has some nice potential. He has similar speed to Jalen Tate, but doesn't have the arm that Tate has and isn't quite the passer that Elijah Eason is either. So it's going to come down when these two, if they are the ones in season seven or whenever it will be when Jalen Tate moves on, it'll be do we want more athleticism from Simon, but less passing ability or less athleticism, but a little bit better of a passer in Elijah Eason. Next up, we have Omar Rogers. And he is 6'5", 262, a blocking tight end from Virginia. So one of the guys outside of our normal target zone. And he's not super great in any area. He's not a great athlete. He is pretty strong though, which is nice. And I think he could be a good blocker for us. With Cordell Hicks moving on in the next couple seasons, we need to find someone who can replace him. And currently we don't have anyone on the roster who's a great receiver. Omar Rogers isn't that either but I think we can find different areas, especially if we're able to get more talent at wide receiver and running back where tight end isn't a super big need and we can just have someone who's a good blocker. Now we move back to the defensive side of the football as we have Timothy Hart. He's a big body, 6'6", 280 from Nebraska. And he's decently strong, but has a decent area that he needs to improve. Could be a guy who's able to play outside and inside a defensive end and defensive tackle. And I do think with time, he could be a great player for us with his size, strength, and ability to develop in power moves and block shedding. Then another defensive end from South Dakota, this one is, and it's Dexter Johnson. He's more undersized and more is a right end in my opinion. He doesn't have elite speed, but good acceleration, decent strength, and a great finesse move to start. He's probably never going to be someone who's going to be a guy who can play all three downs because he's probably never going to be able to stop the run, but I think he does have some great finesse moves and ability to grow as a pass rusher. Then the last guy we're going to look at today, it's LaShawn Olsen from Polson, Montana. He's 5'11", so he's bigger than some of the cornerbacks we recruited in recent years, but he's only 160 pounds, so there are concerns about his ability to play along the line of scrimmage and come up and make plays in the running game. But he has good speed, and just as another guy on this board, and guys we continue to get who will come in, redshirt, and with time I think could be impact players for us, or at least provide us with good depth. So now we're going to go through our bye week and our next game will be against Fresno State. So we'll have to see what is in the store for us, if we can get any more commitments as we go through our bye week. And then we'll preview the game against Fresno State as well. So we go through our bye week and we have gotten some great news. We got seven commitments as we went through the bye week. And as it seems like we've done every year so far in this series, we start off super well. We get a ton of commitments early on in the season, get our class up in the top 20. And of course, as the season goes on, it does drop. But it's great to see that we were able to get so many commitments early on in the season. It makes the offseason a lot less stressful. And like I've said, we've done a great job of that so far. So the first commitment we got was Dexter Johnson, the good pass rusher. Then Omar Rogers, Isaiah Simon, or Simon, I should say, Chancellor Adams, Travion Hart, Jalen Paul, and Nolan Durant. 
So a number of skill position players and then a couple guys in the front seven. And with that, we open up the ability to target some other players. So we will look at Daniel Hernandez, who's going to get a scholarship offer. He's 6'4", 284. So he, once again, is not super hefty in his weight and isn't the athlete that the other players that we're targeting along the offensive line are. But he's a good run blocker, nice impact blocking, and another player, redshirt, time to develop and just developmental player for us. Deshaun Calhoun. He's six foot, so he's shorter, but he is 274 out of Montreal. And he is a more of a left in my opinion. He has decent acceleration, good strength, nice hip power, but just needs time to develop. And I think with time could be a nice run stopper for us. Then one more player we're gonna look at and add to the board. It's Denzel Oliver. He is 6'3", 276, another player from South Dakota. We try and keep as many of those in-state players in-state and getting them to come to Vermillion. We haven't got a ton of impact talent at defensive tackle outside of Duran Covington. And this is just another guy with time to develop, I think, potentially could have a nice role for us. He has good strength, and that's basically his number one strength right now. He doesn't have a ton of strengths outside of that but 6'3", so a good base to grow into. So one final thing to do before we wrap up today's episode is just preview our game against Fresno State real quickly. So their defense looks to be good so far this year, a nice pass defense, and they've been tough for us so far in this series. Jake Hayner is back. He is 800 yards passing so far this year, six touchdowns, zero interceptions. They're also two and two on the season, so the same as us. They beat an FCS team to open the season, then lost to Tennessee. They also lost to Texas Tech, who is now up to number 14. And then they beat, I'm not, they beat South Dakota State, who is now one and three on the season. A little confusing as we have South Dakota State there and then San Diego State down there. San Diego State is 4-0 and first place in the West Division. So Fresno State's roster at the top of a we have quarterback Jake Hayner. This is his third year as a starter. We've seen him. This will be our third time playing against him. He doesn't have a super strong arm, but he's accurate and can make a good number of the throws that you want a quarterback to. And as we've seen so far in this series, he is a decent athlete and can make plays with his legs. Jalen Cropper is back. He's not a great athlete, but has sure hands. They have a couple nice players along the defensive line at defensive tackle. Good tight end there. And then we just look at the rest of the roster and some of the players that we will be facing in this game. So a big weakness I just noticed on this Fresno State team is the linebacker position. Sherwin King Jr. will not be playing. He's been a starter for three years. He's an impact player for them. He will be replaced by Sean Thomas, a redshirt freshman. Then a middle linebacker, it's a true sophomore, Jamal Atkins. He's only 5'9". At right outside linebacker, they do have Ryan Fields, who is good, and his backups are good as well, but I'm not sure if they're going to see the field. But I hope you did enjoy today's episode. It's always nice to take a break from the games and just look around college football, see what's going on, and how the season is shaping up outside of our world that we live in in Vermilion, and then also get to look at our recruits and the future of this program. If you did enjoy, please leave a like down below. Make sure you comment your thoughts down below. And which players in this recruiting class are you most excited for? Are there any players who you think are sleepers who with development could be stars for this Coyote team? Then also make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any more of the South Dakota Dynasty as we move through season four and forward with this program as they continue to get better. And I'm really excited to see them do it. But I hope you did enjoy, like I said, and I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you next time at home against Fresno State.